to begin to bridge what, what might be your only experience with web programming. What I thought I'd do is steal a couple of examples that you may have seen in 50 if you took it the past year or two, or may not have if you took it a few years ago, that are baby steps toward a, a paradigm known as MVC, Model View Controller. And what does this mean? This, as we'll see, again, perhaps, is just a way of starting to clean up the design of some web-based piece of software, or it could be client-side based as well, but we'll use it in the context of PHP, so that we can begin to make more complex projects and sort of separate different types of code within the application, particularly so that when we have multiple people working on a project, it's a lot easier to draw lines. So first, let's take a look at a suboptimal way of implementing something. Suppose I wanted to make a super simple course website for 50 or any other class, and that class has things like lectures and a syllabus. I could do something like an H1 tag at the top of my page and an unordered list with LI list items in order to just have a bulleted list of menu options. So super simple. So how might we do this? Well, let me go into uh, my terminal window here, and notice that I've got a README, and we'll link to this code on the course's website um, uh, in a bit, and notice that I've got index.php. Uh, so let me go ahead and open that, and sure enough, it's kind of silly that this is even called PHP, because all I have is a PHP comment, and then everything else is just raw HTML code. But again, this is version 0, so step toward something more interesting. But notice I've hard-coded CS50 as the title, CS50 in the H1, and now I have the lectures link, now I have the syllabus link. All right, so that doesn't seem all that unreasonable until you follow a link like lectures, and you realize that, all right, it's different content, but it's kind of the same thing. It's a title of a page and an unordered list. I click week 0 from last year, and it's kind of the same thing, an H1 tag and an unordered list. And then finally, I click this, and I get to some leaf, which is the slides from that particular lecture. So something tells me I'm about to cringe. If I open up lectures.php, notice that it's pretty much copy and paste from the previous file. I just changed the title, the H1, and what these links are. Worse yet, if I go into week 0.php, it's the same copy-paste job with just a bit of content tweak. So surely there's an opportunity here to improve. And surely this should be a good rule of thumb. Anytime you find yourself copying and pasting something more than maybe once, um, red flag should hopefully start to go off. But how do we go about improving this? Well, there's a few ways. And so the techniques you can use in PHP have evolved over time. But let's try this one. Let me go into version 1, so the next iteration of this. And let me try to clean it up a bit. Right, one of PHP's simplest mechanisms for solving this problem is the old school require function, which pretty much does a copy and paste of the contents of some file right here, like C's sharp include and other languages have very similar constructs. So it looks a little strange now. It's definitely not a complete looking web page, but presumably what's inside of header.php? All the other stuff, right? The HTML tag, the head tag, the title tag, all the stuff that was above the main essence of the page, which is arguably just the unordered list. And in the footer is probably like the close body tag, the close HTML tag. Pretty uninteresting, but duplicative stuff. All right, and sure enough, if I go into header.php, it's just kind of the orphaned fragment from the top. And if I go into footer.php, it's the orphan fragment from the bottom. And I'm using those same fragments in my other files, like lectures.php. All right, so what's better about this, would you say? Yeah. Simplicity? I don't know. This kind of looks a lot scarier to me now, right? Exactly. So maybe in that sense it's simpler. Maybe I'd frame it as it's just it's easier to update it. It's maybe a little cleaner because you update it in just one place. So that's pretty compelling. Um, what's a downside of this approach, or what problem remains that we haven't really solved? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm still copying and pasting. It's a little less, but I only pulled up two of these files, and they pretty much still looked identical. There was a require at the top, a required at the bottom, and an unordered list in the middle, which itself was still structurally the same. Moreover, notice this. If I actually view this example, let me go to version 1 now. Notice I've got CS50 lecture syllabus. Uh-oh. CS50 week 0, week 1. CS50 Wednesday, Friday. I've kind of cut a corner. What was what were those titles previously? They were like lectures in week zero. Like it was kind of sexier and it actually had some dynamism to it. And this is kind of, I'm just kind of punting now and just assuming that the whole website is CS50. And okay, it works, but it's certainly not as, as elegant or as sort of straightforward as it once was. But that makes sense because if you look at index.php and lectures.php and week zero.php, they're all including the same file. 
So how can we improve this? What's the next iteration of this code probably going to do? Yeah, exactly. So if we, and let me summarize with, we essentially want to parameterize that header so that, yes, there's still a hard-coded h1 tag, but the stuff in between, the open and the close tag, is presumably dynamic and coming from something else. Maybe the get string or the thing after the question mark in the URL or somewhere else. So let's take a look. So if I go into version 2 now, notice that I've got an additional file. It looks like helpers.php. I don't really know where to begin, so I'm going to start just at index, as always. And now notice it's a little different. So I've got a require line at the top requiring helpers.php, but I could call it whatever I want. But now notice line 3 there is a function call to render header, which is interesting only insofar as what's being passed in, apparently, the custom title for this particular page. Meanwhile, there's render footer at the bottom, and I don't need any parameterization there. It's just the footer. But now this seems to be a step toward a better solution. Render header takes, and what do the square brackets indicate for those who haven't seen PHP ever or in a while? Yeah, it's an array. It's an associative array or a hash that associates keys with values. It's like JavaScript's object notation or other languages, similar syntax. All right, so what is in helpers.php? In helpers.php, it's just a couple of functions, render header and render footer. So a couple of details, if less familiar. So first of all, the fact that render header takes a data argument that's apparently assigned the empty array there means what? What does it mean to do equals open bracket, close bracket as a parameter in PHP? It's the default value. So if I don't pass in an array or any argument whatsoever to the render header or the render footer function, I can at least trust as the author of those functions that data will minimally be an empty array. It won't be undefined or false or something like that. It will be exactly what I gave it as a default. Now this is a bit of a sort of a hackish way of um, loading symbols into your namespace, so to speak. But it works pretty well toward this end of implementing our own sort of poor man's templating engine. Right? There's a lot of tools out there for Python, Ruby, PHP that give you templating capabilities. And that's exactly what we want. We want a template that has an h1 open tag, an h1 close tag, and sort of a placeholder in the middle. And we want to fill those placeholders by way of this function. So this function extract just so happens to give you the following capabilities. If you've got an associative array with key value pairs, like foo equals bar, extract will create a local variable called effectively dollar sign foo and give it a value of bar. So it explodes your associative array from key value pairs into new variables with the corresponding values. And then require.header.php is the same as before. So what are we probably going to see inside of header.php? Probably got that h1 tag. And the close tag, what's going to be inside of it probably, in between it? Exactly. There's probably some mention of dollar sign title. And sure enough, if I zoom in on this, there's my title tag, there's my h1 tag. And inside of it is a dynamic insertion of dollar sign title. But just for good measure, I'm doing this HTML special chars, atrociously named function, but it's useful. What does it do, or what does it protect against? is actually a solution to a threat you were hinting, uh, you would have led us to. Exactly. So if a malicious user or an unsuspecting victim of a phishing attack clicked on a link that in itself had a question mark and something like foo equals, and then the value of foo was actually like open bracket script, close bracket, and then some JavaScript code, if you didn't call this long named function you would actually be injecting raw HTML into your web page, the result of which is that you might, be trick, you might be tricking the user into executing JavaScript code that he or she did not actually intend. And even though usually you're only hurting yourself, like only you know, an idiot's going to type in open bracket script, close bracket, and say alert or something like that and do him or herself in with some weird outcome, if you do get tricked into clicking a link that has raw JavaScript embedded in it as the value of that attribute, you can, among other things, steal someone's cookies because there's a property called document.cookie in JavaScript that allows you to grab a user's session cookie. And if you recall what a session hijacking attack is, long story short, that's one way of actually 
tricking someone into giving you that virtual hand stamp and then taking over their Facebook account or some other type of account. All right, so this is a little long, but it's just using raw HTML code. This is the equivalent of calling echo or print effectively, and we're essentially inserting that dynamically. So, what more remains here? Well, let me go into version three here, and we'll see a somewhat different,、um, uh, same exact file layout, but notice that this time we're going to generalize the header and footer as templates. So, what do I mean by that? What's the one thing that's different here? What has changed since the last version? Subtle, but it's arguably just better, cleaner design. Yeah. Yeah, there's just one standard render function. I didn't special case render header or render footer, both of which, if you recall from helpers.php, were pretty much identical, except for their names and the templates they included. Why not just parameterize the render function and take one argument that's the name of the template and a second optional argument that are the key value pairs that you want to plug in? So if I now look at helpers.php, notice that I'm being a little fancier now. I'm actually checking does the file exist? And if so, Go ahead and require it. Just in case the user accidentally types in some bogus template name, you don't want to throw an error in the program, so we can minimally do them this favor here. All right, but can we take this a step further? In this version here, notice the following. I've just typed ls, and what immediately jumps out is somewhat different. So there's two directories. Right? And so this is now a step toward what will eventually be a more proper framework. This is kind of Sloppy of me to be throwing all of my content inside of a publicly accessible directory that literally is called public. And even though, unfortunately, a lot of frameworks, older ones especially, and even some web hosts, DreamHost among them, forces you to put all of your files in the equivalent of a public directory, even if your files might include database passwords and usernames or other such credentials. Um, that's not at all good design. Much better is only put in the public directory what absolutely has to be user accessible, and everything else that you're including, like helpers.php, there's no reason that that should be web accessible via a browser with a URL. It might be completely innocuous if the user wants to see, maybe who cares, but it's just the principle of it. And God forbid it actually does have a username or password, you don't want the user accidentally or intentionally being able to access it. So we're not quite at a perfect approach here, but notice the following now. In index.php, notice that I'm still requiring helpers, but I'm doing it in such a way that I'm sort of organizing all of the files that will be included into a subdirectory called conventionally includes. And then I call render for header and footer as before. So the only thing I've done is sort of reorganized my directories to be a little more anal about the file structure. But if we now go to this fifth example, notice here that we now have a trio of folders. And this is a bit misleading at the moment because, for simplicity, for the sake of class, I've just thrown everything into John Harvard's public directory just so we can navigate it via a browser. But notice, ignore this part for just a moment, the fact that I'm in there. Notice that I have three subdirectories public, templates, and includes. The idea now is that in a properly configured web server, I would tell Apache. That this website has publicly accessible files here and nowhere else. So, what file do you think I'm going to see inside of public if I type ls? What's、well, at least one file that's probably in there? Okay, index.php. And what file is obviously not in there among others? Like helpers.php, header.php, footer.php, all of the fragments, all of the functionality that doesn't really need to be publicly accessible. It needs to be usable by the files that are publicly accessible. But they themselves, no user needs to see or query a URL for helpers.php. Notice that instead, if I go into includes, there's helpers.php. And if I go into templates, there's Footer and header.php. Frankly, I could have put them in the same directory, but I'm trying to be even more anal about keeping files that are just sort of static templates different from functional files like helpers.php. And I'm just adhering to some fairly common conventions calling the, the directories includes and templates. So the only thing that changes then is again the path. If we go up here, notice that I now just have to include a relative directory dot dot slash includes helpers.php. Or I can be a little more proper. 
and actually do something like this. PHP and a lot of languages have these special symbols that represent the current file's directory. So underscore, underscore, dir, underscore, underscore represents whatever the directory is of this file. And so if you just concatenate with the dot operator, um, that, that would achieve the same result and tends to be a little more robust because you can get into situations with relative directories where just saying dot or dot dot can actually bring you to the wrong place. So this tends to be a little more robust. All right, so what though remains? What do you still not like about this? What could be improved? And you, you commented on it earlier, I think, that there's still some issues. Right, surely we don't have to start writing like sites that look like this, right? This doesn't feel all that much better. They're still copy paste. I still have the require line at the top. I still have render header, render footer. There's a lot of duplication. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we, we've taken a step towards sort of splitting up the C from the V. So MVC is model view controller. Controller sort of the brains of the application. Model tends to be the data or some shared functionality. Um, and view tends to be the aesthetics, the template. So we have taken a step towards separating the C from the V because we now at least have this templates directory. But even there, we essentially have one controller per file. It doesn't look like there's much logic going on here, but index.php is effectively a controller. When you visit a URL ending in index.php, all of the logic that implements that page is right in index.php. And same for lectures.php, same for week0.php. So it, we've kind of strewn our logic all over the place, and it feels like this isn't going to scale very well once we have not four but 40 pages if every page starts with me copying an older version of the file and just tweaking some of the content inside of it. So we've only taken a step toward this, and one of the tools we'll introduce on Wednesday is a framework called Laravel. This is a very popular PHP framework. Other ones include Fuel PHP. There's an older one called Code Igniter. There's one called Cake. There's one called Symphony. I mean, if you Google PHP frameworks, there's an atrocious number of like frameworks that people have implemented. Um, Laravel is one of the more up and comers. Um, it's one of the cleaner ones. Um, and you'll find that ultimately it helps save you quite a bit of time, even though there is a bit of a learning curve, but that we will guide you over on Wednesday. Moreover, we'll introduce what's called an ORM. In this case, we'll use something that comes with this framework called Laravel. It's called Eloquent. And this is just a, a layer of code that allows you to, among other things, talk to databases. And here, too, let me steal an example that is either recent or a throwback for some of you from 50, if you did take 50 and you did CS50 finance, you might recall files that you wrote or re, re, we wrote that look like this. This was login.php. And at the time, especially since we didn't spend much time on PHP fundamentals um, early on, this might itself have been fairly challenging. And so we did, in fact, try to simplify the design. We didn't really separate M from V from C all that much for problem set 7, CS50 finance. But notice the one thing that should hopefully start to soon rub you the wrong way is something like this. I mean, not only was this login.php a controller, it was also talking directly to a database, specifically using SQL, which isn't going to scale very well when you start to work with one or two or three partners. For instance, if one of the partners is responsible for creating your database tables and coming up with your indexes and figuring out what the keys should be, the primary keys, the foreign keys, and all of that, deciding on the table names and all of that, now you, the other person in the group, need to know all of the design decisions he or she has made. And you now need to hard code those decisions into your file. So now he or she is pretty much constrained to never again change those table names, never again to change those field names without informing you. Moreover, you can't really easily work on the same um, file without colliding with each other if he or she is constantly changing names and you have the old versions and so forth. So this is just inviting lots and lots of headaches. Moreover, as we'll see before long, even though you didn't need to do particularly sophisticated queries here, once you start having multiple tables, two tables, three, five, ten tables in a MySQL or gener generally a, a relational database, you have to join those tables often, if familiar, and you have to combine data from one with the other. And frankly, your SQL queries start to get longer and longer and longer and more complex, and it just starts to get a lot easier to make mistakes and a lot harder to get things right. And so tools like Eloquent and ORM is going to help us uh, model our data. And it's also effectively going to generate 
the code that we need to start querying databases in more sophisticated ways. So if you've got a primary key over here and a foreign key over here, all you do need to do is teach that ORM, Object Relation Mapper, what that relationship is, and it will figure out what queries to execute for you. And only in rare cases do you need to necessarily write SQL code yourself if you really want to fine tune something. But for the most part, you can just start treating entities in your databases as true objects and not these flat rows that you somehow need to reconstruct and de-normalize.